Welcome to Straight Talk. This is Eugene Chan. With us tonight is Alan Seaman. I'm sure many of you know him as the father Lan Kuei Fong. He founded and is the chairman of the Lan Kuei Fong Group. He's the voice of Hong Kong to the international community and vice versa. Tonight, Mr. Seaman is going to tell us if he thinks the recent COVID strategy the government has put forward is on the right track. Welcome, Alan. Good to be here, Eugene. Right, Alan, you know, you had your letter to the CE that went yes. viral on the internet. <laughs> the that famous made, letter. Like, exactly, yeah, yeah. more famous. Yeah. And since then, I mean, in the letter, we know how much passion you have for Hong Kong. And since then, our chief executive, Kerry, has lifted some restrictions last week on both the quarantine time right. as well as the flight bans. Right. So do you think your letter is instrumental to that? Well, I think the, you know, the reason I wrote that letter was so many people wherever I went in Hong Kong, international, local, everyone was so down. They really could not see a future for Hong Kong. They didn't know when this was going to end. And it became a real problem. And, it, you know, I'm an advisor for Carrie Lam's Economic Advisory Committee, and I have a good relationship with Carrie. Mm -hmm. And so I, I decided to write the letter only because I could see businesses going bankrupt, stores closed, shops closed in different areas. You know, it, it, this was not Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I'd walk down, mm -hmm. and Lan Kwai Fung was a ghost town. Mm. Trust so, me, we all feel that. And so I decided to write the letter. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it leaked out, it went viral, but in a way, it wasn't meant to go viral, right. but it actually turned out to be a good thing because she could see at that time how many people in Hong Kong were really affected by mm -hmm. all this. Mm -hmm. And so I was very happy at the end right. that, that, that it did go. And uh, my suggestions about opening up, finally, we have to open up. And, and uh, of course, I also in my letter put in ESS, Employment Subsidy Scheme, because in 2020, the restaurants, the, the bars, mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. industries were given employment subsidy mm -hmm. scheme for nine months, 9,000 a month. Uh, and so this time she promised that she would take the file out mm -hmm. and look at it, and she did. And really, that was a game changer in 2020. Mm -hmm. And now I think it's starting for three months, uh, and so uh, 8,000 per employee, and that's a game changer. Right, Alan, did CE reply your letter? She, the oh, next morning, Question. The next per morning she did right. at 7 a.m. And, and, and it was a long reply from her. Right. And uh, it was, I was very, very thankful because she did take it personally. Right. I think she felt as well that Hong Kong really was at its wit's end and, and people needed some things, need, needed leadership, needed someone to mm -hmm. come forward because the biggest problem, we kept getting different messages every day from different mm -hmm. government departments. Carrie Lam would come out and say, we're not having a cut, we're not having the, the lockdown. And then four days later, Sophia Chen, the health minister, would come out and say, oh, we're thinking about 21-day lockdown. Many, many people wound up leaving because of that. And so I said, we need to speak with one voice right. because everybody is giving different uh, opinions. Even, and even the doctors, the so-called medical experts, no one agreed with anyone. Mm. You didn't know who to listen to. Mm. Certainly there was that, like, that feeling among the society. I mean, since you have been in Hong Kong for 50 years, and, right. and as I said earlier, you are the, the voice for us to the international community and vice versa, I'm sure you're also aware of another letter that written by expert. I saw. Basically, I would say accusing both um, uh, um, yeah. Carrie and Sophia, that they yeah. are, they're breaking down our business center. Yeah. Not to mention we have an expat lady that has a nine-month-old baby that had COVID positive, but they weren't allowed to stay in the hospital. Yeah. All that really scared a lot of people. So with all this easing of restrictions, do you think it's, it's putting some confidence back? It, well, Eugene, I could tell you, as soon as Carrie mentioned, originally she was supposed to come out on a Sunday and talk about it, and she didn't say anything that Sunday. It was going to be Sunday or Monday. Monday, Monday. was the, t the last day that people had. Otherwise, bags were packed. People mm. were leaving Hong Kong. People right. had already left after the incident with the mother and, and the daughter. But mm -hmm. I understand there was no room in the hospitals. We were overcrowded. And so they had to make a choice whether have a, 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 a person who you can save a life or mm -hmm. a mother staying with, a healthy mother staying with her child. You can't do that. Carrie was very upset after when she found mm. out about that. And now this changed. Mm. But it did cause a lot of people to leave Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And so for me, 
I think after people uh, heard Carrie's announcement uh, saying that uh, on uh, April 21st, restaurants, bar, uh, restaurants can open up and, and other premises can open up, gyms can open up, uh, and, and a three-prong, three-month approach. And I felt that was the right thing to do. Right. So would you agree that that will be the turning point for Hong Kong's expatriates, time to reconsider Absolutely. Hong Kong as a good place? Absolutely. I mean, a, a lot of people did cancel their, uh, right. leave their, their, their reservations to leave, and, and, and uh, they wanted to see. The other thing was the closure of schools mm -hmm. for people staying at home. You know, Hong Kong, we live in small flats. Uh, kids were driving parents crazy. After a while, they couldn't go out, and, and they had online learning. You can only do online for, for X amount of time. Mm -hmm. After a while, mm -hmm. the child doesn't absorb enough. Right. So all these things were, were confusing messages coming out from the government, right. and I said we need to speak with one voice, and that I imagine why every morning now at 11 a.m., yeah. except yeah. for Tuesday, yeah. Carrie yeah. comes out and, and, and does does an interview? Yeah, honestly, even my 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 home's neighbor, who were, yeah. were from the U.S., they were they were all packed, and, and half the family's already gone because the kids have don't, don't have schools. Right, Alan. So I mean, our CE said that she's very confident that Hong Kong is a good place and people yeah. will come back. Yes. Um, but this time, really, they have, we have pushed them to the limit of really <laughs> thinking of leaving. So. How, why is it so important that we have all these expatriates in Hong Kong? I mean, of course, I treasure them very much, but w w I mean, what value do you think they contribute the most to the Hong Kong Eugene, community? Eugene, the most important thing is China. The right. reason Hong Kong exists with one country, two systems, is because Hong Kong, uh, China needs Hong mm -hmm, Kong mm -hmm. as an international financial center. Right. Even if you look two weeks ago, right. approximately two weeks ago, both Li Keqiang mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, Han Zheng, mm -hmm. uh, during the NPC meetings in Beijing, said one of the things important for Hong Kong, remember, you're an international financial center. We must keep that. Our stock market is international. All the things that China benefits, mm -hmm. we're the super connector between East and West and yes, West and yes, East. Yes. And so we need to keep that. China has 1.4 billion people. They don't need another 7.5 million people as a Chinese city. They need us with our international stature. And that's why I'm so adamant that China expects us to keep that international flavor here. We have all the head offices, the banks, everyone. Everyone's here because they're going to do business with China. Yeah. Yeah, but Alan, to be fair, on our, our government colleagues, because I mean, we work with them in public yeah. services. I know they're one country, two systems. They're trying to maintain the international center. However, I mean, the Chinese business opening the border is of paramount importance exactly. for us. And, but I mean, we're having a zero COVID policy yeah. with over the, over the, the, the border. Yeah. In Hong Kong, we're trying to, I mean, we're trying to cut in, in between living with COVID. So with now all the um, flight bans are sort of lifted, so more people are going to come in. So how is that going to help us to reopen the borders? Because we were saying that hopefully they were aiming to open the borders earlier this year, but it was, it didn't happen we because of the government. Exactly. We were two days away so from opening. So are we back to square one? Well, we're not back to square one, but the thing is, the good thing is Dynamic Zero, every country in the world, China gave it a name, Dynamic Zero, but, but other countries were, at the time when it hit, other countries were trying to suppress the virus. They didn't call it dynamic zero, they call it suppression. Mm. And then once it peaks, which it peaked everywhere else in the world, mm -hmm. then the numbers start to decrease. In the UK, they were the first ones where they were first infected and the numbers started to decrease. Boris Johnson, the prime minister said, oh, now we're gonna live with it. We're gonna open up all the restaurants, like we're, restaurants, bars, everything, mm -hmm. like we're doing April 21st and, yes. and May 21st. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and he gave the, and then US, also followed after that when they don't open up. So basically Hong Kong, it became a political thing with dynamic zero mm -hmm. or living with it. Hong Kong, when we open April 21st and May 21st and then June, if everything's okay, uh, we go back to normal in June. Basically every country's living with it. China's right. been living with it because they were able to suppress Alpha Delta yeah. viruses so well mm. and, and, and everything was open and, and, yeah. and my business in China were open, no, nothing was closed. Right, Alan, before we, before we take a break, I want to yeah. ask you one very fundamental question. I mean, you have been a person in the business community, you had your great idea of developing Lan Kui Fong, right. Ocean Park, I mean, all that initiatives have been great for Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, it, as you know, be, and we're gonna talk more about that after the break, but to restart Hong Kong, I mean, what do we have left? I mean, like, 
Uh, we used to be a shopper's paradise, used to have tourism, but are we still a shopper's paradise? I mean, you know, all the rent are very high. Well, so what do you say that before the break? How can we restart? Well, it's a good question. I think we have to get back to living with it, basically. I mean, people need to get a normal life back again. The Greater Bay Area is the future of Hong Kong. Right. You know, 11 cities, one and a half hour radius from Hong Kong. Hong Kong's one of the four key cities to be international financial center for that. We're now talking about the northern metropolis with Shenzhen, mm. uh, really increasing our digital, which we're very, very weak on right now, attracting more companies. Suddenly, the, the lure of, of, of 1.4 billion people, and you're talking Greater Bay Area, 84 million people. Mm. Last year, GDP of 1.67 trillion US dollars, bigger than the GDP of South Korea. That's what Hong Kong goes from, 7.5 million people to 84 million people. That lure will attract businesses to come back to Hong Kong. Yes, some people won't come back who left, but many will, because Hong Kong still, to me, I've been here 50 years, this mm -hmm. is the best place in the world to live. Okay, well, we'll have a break and don't go away. Thanks for staying with us. We have been talking to Mr. Alan Seaman about our government's roadmap to recovery. So, Alan, on the first part, we, yes. we touch on the part about how the Hong Kong restart. But before we go on to that further, right. about the expatriate community, Correct. because uh, yeah. we rely on your years yeah. to the community, and also many of my patients yeah. are yeah. from yeah. the expat yeah. community. They do say one thing to me. They say, Eugene, Hong Kong is no longer the Hong Kong that we used to know. Of course, it's, I said, no, it's one country, two system. But said, you don't have freedom of speech. I said, we have. And they said they are very worried about the national security legislation. So what would you say to all of them? Eugene, what I say all the time, the best thing that happened to Hong Kong is the national security law. Right. Out of 200 countries around the world, 120 countries have security laws. Mm. I think U.S. might be, has something like 20 security right. laws, if mm. I'm not mistaken. So that brought stability to Hong Kong. We never passed Article 23, you know, in 2003. And it, you know, it was, it, it caused divisions within the society. You know, everyone had a different opinion of mm. what Hong Kong had to be. One Country, Two Systems has only been an experiment that mm. Deng Xiaoping came up with. Mm. And we're living the experiment, actually. Mm. Mm. And so I do believe every country needs a security law. And the security law really brought stability. Right. Businesses need stability. We have to know what's going on. 2019 was not a great year for Hong Kong. In all my years here, mm. it was pretty scary for many, mm. many people. Yes. And this was not Hong Kong. So that's brought stability, and that's why I say that is a great future. Right. And, of course, being part of China, to me, is another one country, two systems, is another big, big plus for Hong Kong. Um, as the title of the show tonight yes. is, is our government uh, COVID, uh, the latest COVID policy on the right track. Yeah. Or do you think it's just too, too far off for us to see the light at the end of the tunnel? What do you think? Well, I, the good thing is the vaccinations now. We're at 92% for the first vaccine first coach, yes. and 84% for the second vaccine. And third vaccine is up there, I think the 50s or 60%. That's, this virus is all about vaccination. Unfortunately, Omicron was different than Alpha Delta mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's upper respiratory. Alpha Delta attacked the lungs. It takes uh, more time to transmit. This one <laughs> transmits yes. really, really quickly, and that's what caused the problem. That's why even with China, I'm anxious to see if they can use their dynamic zero, if it really can suppress it. You know, if not, we're gonna have, they're going to have yeah. to open up eventually. And this, as the experts have said, this they think will be endemic. Right. Come every year. We have to find a way to go forward because the whole world is going to have to find the same way. Right. We're lucky because we got hit with BA2, which is not, uh, not BA1, which, was, which went around the world, Omicron 1 mm. first. Mm. Omicron 2 is the, mu is, is the mutation. Right. So right. that's what we got hit with. So we've kind of been through that. Mm -hmm. We won't go back to BA1. And so I think that going forward, with the vaccinations, that's the only thing. I've been, for flu vaccine, I've been 20 years now, I right. get the vaccine every yeah. year, and it helps me. Right. Alan, you know, one of our common friends, Bernard yes. Chan, the yes. ex convener, said last week that many expatriates that have left because of the Correct. restrictions on the, on the, on the quarantine, yes. they will not come back. And yeah. a lot of them, were, and, and 
and what he foresees, the difficulty or the challenges we're going to have, is whether Hong Kong will still maintain as an international financial center. What is your comment to that? I think Bernard uh, has, yeah, a, has a point. I, I heard he? Bernard, yes, he had a point, yes, and I know he kind of got maybe clarified with the chief executive the next, yeah. you know, the next day when asked uh, by a reporter. I think that, of course, many companies have left because many companies you can't have, before we had 21 day quarantine, you forget that, mm -hmm. now it's 14 day, now hopefully seven, seven days. days yes. But um, many companies left because you can't, you need executives, especially big banks, big head offices, you need to bring executives out from overseas. It's going on three years that we have not been able to bring executives out or in. They can't go into quarantine. Mm -hmm. if in, in business, you need to make split second decisions. Yes, exactly. yep. And so I believe now we're headed in the right directions. Finally, the nine countries uh, that were banned from yep. flying here are coming back to Hong Kong. Yes. But mainly uh, for Hong Kong uh, residents. Mainly, right? mainly, yes. And, I, and I'm, I'm advocating let's start, start with the Hong Kong residents. I do believe. By June, if this uh, virus really uh, is now is decreasing, and the numbers, I believe, by April, end of April, the, the numbers will be very low right, if we continue yeah, because yeah. of the vaccination. And one in every of every two people have already been <laughs> infected. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. not everybody reported to the government because the rapid test was really something that right. helped a lot, exactly. helped Hong Kong. Exactly. So I do believe that at the end of the day, we'll be back maybe by June, but by, by July, by this summer, will be open again. Businesses, some people will start to come back. The schools being open, that's very, very important for families. So many that love Hong Kong will come back. Many businesses that have left, it's not a problem because new businesses will come. I've seen mm -hmm. it happen in 97, in 2019, in 2003. I've watched over the years, I've been here a long time, mm -hmm. and the attraction is the Chinese market. It's the fastest growing economy in the world. Right. So, Alan, we just mentioned about some of the expatriate uh, yeah. businesses that are trying to move their Asia Pacific headquarters from Hong Kong, say, Correct. to our, our friend yes. Singapore. I mean, yeah. I, my brother is, is in the business. He yeah. told me that. He said, brother, be careful. I mean, oh, we are losing on businesses. I mean, it, recently, Singapore even relaxes even further Correct. on the restrictions. Yes. So what is still our ad over Singapore and how do we maintain that? And <laughs> most important, how do we promote it properly? How Eugene, do you do that? Our edge over Singapore is because we are part of China. True. And I say the Greater Bay Area, many, many Chinese companies are opening up here. I mean, you just have to walk in the street or even mm -hmm. come, come to mm -hmm. Langway Fong at lunch or dinner <laughs> yes. and hear Putonghua being spoken yes. all the time, you know, which you didn't have in the past. So many Chinese companies are opening up here. Uh, our stock market, we have a, a, a great stock market, especially known in the world. It's being very fair. Many, many companies are now doing IPOs in Hong Kong. So there is a great attraction for Hong Kong. Singapore, of course, is a very good city. It's a very good country. Um, the thing is that Singapore is mostly for South, Southeast Asia, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, they don't have the, uh, for China, Hong Kong, they, they must make Hong Kong right because we are so important to, right. to China. And that's why, I believe that Hong Kong will continue to recover with China's help. You can see during this whole uh, COVID, uh, we had to rely on China for Professor Liang. You know, yes, Liang. Wen Zhen came here Supplies. And, and really yep. gave great advice that yes. uh, we now don't have to worry about doing the, the right. cut, the, the lockdown, because yep. it's not the right time. And, and, and basically just worry on saving the old people. Right. The problem we, we have care homes, we're, we're kind of out of control, older people, we're not vaccinated, and if we would have had a mandated vaccination, mm. everyone would have been vaccinated, right. we would not have the deaths today. And I know it's easy to, be, uh, to, uh, to give advice after the fact, but yes. unfortunately, I hope we can learn a lot from this. Right. So Alan, and up until this moment, I, I hear very clear messages from you that Hong Kong has finally reached a turning point. Yes with the vaccinations, Correct. opening up the borders. Correct. You think business is going to come back because we're right at the doorstep of China. Correct. And there will be people who may not come back, but I'm sure there'll be more new, new people, people coming from come. the 84 million yeah. people around the world. Right, just one the last thing you mentioned about the Greater Bay Area is yeah. our, our hope for the future. Yes. I asked that same little question in the last few shows, and yeah. I just felt our youth aren't really being um, 
they are not very keen to go, not I even agree. Shenzhen, don't even mention further away. So how can we actually make that happen? It's great to put on paper. How do well, we do it? What will happen, Eugene, is happens everywhere. Most people are comfortable with what they know. People don't know the Greater Bay Area. And what happens is once it opens, unfortunately because of the virus, it's been put on the back burner for a right. while. Mm -hmm. But China is determined to make it happen. And I know with that GDP, uh, I know you have certain pioneers that go in. Young people from Hong Kong will set up a business there. Suddenly they become a unicorn. And then other people look at, oh my God, that's a, mm -hmm. look, they look at how, <laughs> Jack Ma in, in, in Alibaba, oh, you know, yes. was, was, yeah, there's examples, you know. You get another <laughs> Jack Ma or, or Pony Ma or one oh, of yes, those people, yes. and suddenly, people start going. The border between Hong Kong and China kind of yes. <laughs> almost disappears, you know, and with, with technology, you'll be able to walk back mm -hmm. and forth. Mm -hmm. And so, we're one and a half, it's faster to go to Shenzhen okay. today, 14 minutes yes. on high-speed rail. It's yes. faster than for me to go to my house on the south side oh. in Hong Kong. Yes, it is. But Alan, the last thing I want to ask you yeah. is about we know the new chief executive is going to be elected on the 8th of May, <laughs> yes. as read widely in newspapers. Around the corner. Yes. Hopefully this is going to happen, no more delay, because Correct. we need to move on to the next government. It won't be delayed. It won't be delayed, right. Um, as a person from the business community, rather than we us guessing who's yeah. going to be the candidate, yes. let's look at more pragmatic, pragmatic manners. Yeah. How, from the business point of view, what type of CE do we want? What type of government can we have so that we can attract all the people who have constantly leaving? to come and asking their friends and families to join to come yeah, to Hong yeah. Kong. What do you say to that? I think Hong Kong is predominantly a business society, an international mm. financial center. And I think we need somebody that really understands business, mm -hmm. under comes, maybe understands finance, the financial community, can really show to the world that we are back, right. that Hong Kong we is back. back. Yes. yes, and that is something that's really, really important. So it's somebody that really understands how to get Hong Kong back on track. We've had a tough time on the way. As I said earlier, we're, it's like being on an airplane with turbulence yes. and everybody's holding on for dear life. Eventually the plane comes out of the clouds and lands. People all clap mm -hmm. and they walk off and go on a holiday. Hong Kong will survive and we survived after 97. We survived after all the difficult periods we've had. And I believe we need really a chief executive that has good foresight. I mean, Carrie Lam has tried her, ba her, her best, you know. Right. Yes, we've, she's made mistakes, yes. she's had good things, okay. bad things, but at the end of the day, we need somebody very strong with a great foresight okay. that really could get the confidence of the people. We must work together. Right. All right, Alan, that's all the time we have. And thank you, Mr. Alan Simon, for sharing with us your insights into how a government can harness support from all sectors of a community to fuel Hong Kong's post-COVID economic recovery. Stay healthy and see you next week. <laughs>